Hello and welcome back to our 10th anniversary series with Mountain Blade Warband. Bear in mind this is the 10 year anniversary for my series, for my original series starting, and not the actual anniversary for the game, but, you know, there's only two years, oh, there's only two years apart of, from that, so yeah, anyway, what we're gonna do is very quickly just gonna level Barney Beartilds, as you can see I've actually changed his name because, well, let's face it, for nostalgia's sake, Let's just go with Barney, shall we? Because even though it is very amusing for us to see this person was killed by a vegetable, it might be, uh, it, I don't know. I just think, nostalgia's sake, I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, we're going to go for that that other point in charisma right here. We're going to go for another point in leadership. You can see here I actually did level up uh, once more off screen. I was um, fighting a bunch of sea raiders. I did two additional village raids as well just to gain a little bit of extra cash. And I also did the thing that I was talking about at the end of the previous episode. And we are now ready to continue. And so we're going to see how we do here. Anyway, I'm just going to continue leveling up two-handed. Although, to be fair, I don't know whether we can really continue to do that because, as you can see, my Weapon Master is looking pretty much capped out. So I'm thinking we're probably going to be specking in that a little bit more as well. But of course, my agility is absolutely abysmal at the moment. And that is not really the thing that we are really caring about anyway. Our own personal prowess is very much secondary to how our army is going to be so you can see here already i actually found a bunch of mercenary cavalry these are really expensive by the way so i'm actually thinking of placing them at the top because if they die then it's going to save me uh 60 dinars every single week which is really really nice because you can see here swadian knights are 50 dinars which is cheaper and they're, as far as I'm aware, better as well. So, for example, if you take a look at the stats of the Mercenary Cavalry here, you can see they have 130 in every single weapon proficiency. And they also have five, 4 in Power Strike, not 5, and 4 in Iron Flesh. And then if you were to go over to the Swadian Knights, you're going to see they are a little bit better in terms of one-handed, obviously. And they have the same... Wow, that's actually quite surprising. They have uh, one one more in Iron Flesh and Power Strike. And generally, they are going to be better, but they're cheaper. So it's uh, it's it's kind of here, neither here nor there, really. But it very much depends on whether you have the extra cash to spare. That's pretty much what we're uh, looking at right there. Anyway, um, I also outfitted Jeremus in a couple of pieces of gear that I have uh, pilfered from our opponents, the Sea Raiders. And he is now, uh, look, he's looking all right. He's looking all right. He's not looking particularly amazing or anything like that. He's just got a very standard Sea Raider chest piece on. And he also has um, one of the Sea Raider helmets as well as a shield and a standard looking sword. So yeah, nothing really much to write home about there. But he's looking much better than he was. And hopefully he's going to prove himself to be a uh, somewhat, um, somewhat useful companion, because bear in mind, I actually really like the way that the companions were done in Warband. I um, do appreciate the way that Bannerlord has done it with the, the randomized portion of the whole thing, but most of the time, companions are not that useful. Obviously, that is, in my opinion, that is just literally a personal preference thing, personal opinion of mine. But it is, um, I don't know, generally I always find, if I'm going to find a companion in Bannerlord, they usually do not have the skills that I require, or they're just way too low to actually be of any use, because they take a long time to level up, and it's very difficult to actually specialize them in a certain thing, because they come predetermined with a bunch of different focus points placed in all kinds of different skills and these skills are generally not going to be that useful to that particular archetype of companion you see what i mean it's basically like jeremus uh coming with uh i don't know points in leadership and obviously points in leadership are absolutely fine if we're going to make him into a vassal or something like that but generally that's obviously not what you are going to want to do to a companion that also has skills in first aid and wound treatment you're going to want that guy being your primary medic aren't you? So that's kind of what I'm talking about in regards to the Bannerlord uh, companions. Whereas in Warband, you do have a very clear idea. Oh, that person is your medic. That person is your spotter slash pathfinder. And that person is your engineer. You know, it's basically like that. It's very, very clear, very, very easy to kind of understand that. 
And uh, well, it's not really that big a deal for me personally. I'm not really caring one way or another, but I really very much missed the original companions. I thought they were a lot of fun. And what we're going to do is I think we're actually going to be increasing my charisma even further. I would like to get as much leadership as possible because in the end, it's going to make a, a huge difference. It really is going to make a huge difference. And otherwise, I'm thinking we'll probably increase our iron flesh or start increasing our iron flesh. Don't think I'm really going to be using a shield that much. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised. Oh, I didn't even mean to click on that. Anyway, I'm actually kind of surprised that we are um, using two-handed. I actually wouldn't have expected myself to use two-handed, but we are apparently doing that. It's a little bit strange to me, as I say. I'm not ever really thinking to myself, oh yes, I will definitely use two-handed in warbands. Using two-handed in warband is very dangerous because you don't really have that much survivability as it is and taking away your shield is even more dangerous than it would normally be so yeah it's um it's kind of interesting kind of interesting to see what we can do with that anyway i also bought two extra horses as you can see right there and now we have the maximum of six Technically, you can buy more, but that is just going to slow you down after the initial six. Just so you know, that's basically how um, how the mechanics work in, uh, in in Warband. I'm actually looking for a couple of other companions as well. Um, I'm looking for... Who am I looking for now? I'm looking for Borcha. Borcha would be quite good. Uh, I'm also looking for... Oh, I can't remember the other guy's name. I can't remember the other guy's name, but it's okay. It doesn't really matter too much. We're just going to be waiting here for a little bit of extra time. Did I level up everyone? Yeah, I did level up everyone. And I'm thinking, actually, we might even be able to declare war against the Nords, or at the very least, we could try and raid some of their villages. As they are currently, if I actually take a look... They are currently at war with the Kingdom of Swadia, which is actually really, really good for us. Because if we do a little bit of an attacking against them, they're gonna be they're gonna be even weaker against the Swadians, and then maybe the Swadians will be able to actually attack them properly and do some some damage at least. Just not, you know, not not a not a massive amount, but you know, they will be able to do a little, and that is exactly what we want. We want these factions to fight against each other in as efficient a way as possible. Because if they can continue fighting against each other, continuing to weaken themselves, and I don't want either one of them to become too powerful, of course, but in those kinds of situations, we're obviously going to be able to take advantage of it. So hopefully we'll be able to do that if we um, may maybe declare war against the Nords. We can also attack some of their vassals as well, which would indeed provide us with a lot of experience. That would give my own my own units so much more experience than just fighting Sea Raiders. And as I say, I've been fighting Sea Raiders for a little bit of time. Not a... Not a, not a lot, but you can see obviously by the fact that I've gained three levels now. I gained two off screen and one uh, in this episode already that I, I haven't been, I don't know, I've been fighting quite a bit, but you know, generally I get what, uh, I don't know, two or three kills in every single battle. So it's, it's not, um, it's not a, a crazy amount of kills that I'm getting and yet I'm still getting level ups. So I don't know. Maybe um, maybe it would be a good idea for us to start fighting some vassals. So I think I will probably try to do that. And then we're just going to act as a bit of a bit of a bandit, a bit of a raider. And we're just going to take our opportunities where we can get them pretty much. That's that's kind of the, 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 the point of that. As we're just going to swoop in, raid a village, and then run away, sell our ill-gotten gains, and then rinse and repeat a little bit of a little bit of time you know because obviously we can't do that infinitely because they're, they're going to get way too annoyed at us and then they're just going to absolutely hunt us down to the ends of the earth you know sometimes that does happen sometimes it does happen and uh yeah so we'll, we'll see what we can do with that because obviously i want to try and level up my forces as fast as i possibly can and leveling up is well pretty much half the battle to be honest because once i have a decent amount of uh, man at arms and Swadian knights. You can see I have 10 total at the moment. I should be able to tackle these slightly stronger vassals in the uh, in the Nords faction. Maybe. I think that would be quite quite fun. So I'm thinking, you know what? 
let's go and try and do that. So let's go over, I'm gonna go over to Sargoth real fast. And we're just gonna sell all our stuff. All of this, get that out of there, there we go. And uh, at the moment my loot is currently covering the weekly weekly wages, which is actually really, really nice. I was not expecting that. There's King Ragnar himself. Let's just take a quick look at his composition. All right, yeah, so he has Nord Warriors. Now, I'm actually unsure whether they have a troop tree in the base game. I don't think they have a troop tree in the base game. That is one thing that is a little bit frustrating to me. Actually, I think, no, I don't, I don't think they do. They don't have game under the game con concepts thing. No, they don't. Okay, yeah. So unfortunately, um, yeah, unfortunately, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So um, yeah, I would have to search that externally in the wiki or something like that. But yeah, Nord Warriors, as far as I'm aware, are tier four i think they are tier four because if you take a look at, at this particular person's army you can see here he has nord trained footmen nord footmen so i'm going to assume nord footmen are tier two nord trained footmen are tier three nord warriors are tier four nord veterans are tier five and then the huskals are tier six he obviously has one nord huskal now for me specifically i'd probably i'd probably be able to deal with this guy i could probably fight him i could probably fight him could probably do a pretty decent job of maybe even defeating him. And that would be kind of fun, right? I think that would be kind of fun. So I'm, I've am i got 12,000. I have enough food to last me a little bit of time. And what we're going to do is we're going to head over here. This is going to be our escape route. And whoa, this is actually perfect. Look at this. And this is how perfect it is. Look at this. Our farmers, well, shall we say the Nord farmers that we want to attack, are literally just following us over to the village, which is absolutely perfect. So now we're just going to say, hey, I'm going to attack you, but then we're not actually going to go forward with that. And we're just going to go over here and loot and burn this village. Now we have to be very, very careful here. I, can I actually stop raiding? No, I can't stop raiding. So if an enemy vassal comes over here, which it's highly likely they're going to be on high alert because they're at war against the Swadians, of course. But no, look at this. They actually allowed me to do it. I'm really surprised. I thought they would really very badly want to want to try and defend against any possible attack. But apparently they uh, they just completely dropped the ball here. That's good for me. That is very, very good for me. And I'm just going to take some sausages, some fruit and some smoked fish instead of the other stuff and we're just going to swap it around as you can see right there and then what we're going to do is we're going to head straight onward to the other village we're taking a very big risk here this is a super big risk because the vassals that were on the way to Alderlan could have also uh well be close they could be close now to us and if they are close then they're definitely going to be able to intercept us no never mind okay they were unable to get here in time fantastic that is absolutely perfect. So now we can basically take all of this. And I think that's pretty much it. I would love to be able to take the rest of this, but unfortunately I don't think I can. Maybe I can actually uh, swap out some bread for flax. Some of the fruit for flax. And that's pretty much all I can do, as you can see. Don't have enough in inventory management, which makes me very, very sad. Oh, well, never mind. I mean, technically I could have specced more into it, but... Oh well, never mind. Jeremus, I believe, is actually going to complain about this. I don't think he really likes raiding or anything like that, so he's probably going to pop up in a second and say, how dare you do such a thing? Or he's going to, you know, end up leaving us because he really does not like raiding at all. But thankfully, I was able to make it back here without so much as a peep from the Nords. I'm really surprised. As I say, I, I had no idea that they were going to be so lax about it, but apparently they were. Very surprising. Very, very surprising. Okay, so let me just sell all of this, sell this, there we go, and we can then sell all of this as well. Wow, we're, we're getting so much money right now. This is really, really good. And unfortunately, a lot of the villagers in the area are already looted by the Nords, so it is going to be very, very difficult for us to recruit additional units, which I very badly wanted to do, actually. Not going to sell the oil here, because as you can see, they have a massive amount of it. So there's really no point in me doing that. And otherwise, we're just going to go to other places to do it and sell that. There we go. Oh, 2,700 here. Yeah, I should really remember that because we really need to go here in the future and sell some more stuff. 
Okay, so we're just going to stop on over at the very nearby villages. Oh, no one seems to be willing to join me. Ooh, could be because of my honor rating. Maybe maybe people are slightly, slightly thinking that they don't want to join us. Ah, it seems like I've run into a trap by bandits. Okay, so this obviously was not anticipated. I'm in Axkarl at the moment. I was actually just recruiting some people from the nearby village, and I thought to myself, okay, I'm just going to go into the marketplace because I still have that oil to sell, so I would very much like to do that, but obviously these enemies really wanted a piece of us, and I'm basically just going to hide here behind the wall just to try and draw them in. Oh, he's actually not even moving. What a smart person indeed. Okay. He really doesn't want us to close the gap. I'm just going to cleave him in two with this. Or not. Because apparently he's really good at blocking. Well, not, not that good. And there you go. He's, he's now dead. Okay, fantastic. That was really, really funny. I have no idea what was even, you know, taking, uh, taking them over right there to, to think that they could destroy the amazing Barney in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in martial combat. Anyway, we have 19,000 dinars right now, which is actually amazing. I'm going to try this tournament just generally because I think it's fun. It's definitely fun to try. And after this, we're going to be fighting a couple of Nord vassals. And we'll see whether we can actually make something happen there. And if it doesn't happen, then that's absolutely fine as well. Because I, I really don't mind leveling up my own forces. Leveling up my forces is, as I say, one of the best things that you can do. Gaining some much needed, powerful people to, you know, stay by your side for the entirety of the, the time that you're wanting to create your factions. Definitely going to be something that will be extremely useful. Can I actually do damage? It's 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 apparently difficult to deal damage. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, these guys are really looking pretty um, pretty dangerous at the moment. So I'm not entirely sure if I can even do this. Oh, yeah, this is really bad. Okay, we killed him. That's nice. Okay, I I remember the strategy. Okay, I, ooh, this is really funny actually. It's all coming back to me in a huge rush of memories right now where it's uh, it, it's kind of you know how to you know how to beat people right you know how to beat people in the tournaments you run them down with your horse you run them down with your horse so that their block is dropped by the dazing effect that the horse does and then you basically swing through your body and hope that you hit someone that's pretty much how that works and uh, hopefully you're fast enough to be able to do that these guys are also relatively badly damaged so it is making things much much easier for us obviously it is very difficult if the enemy decides that they want to hit your horse itself but thankfully we were able to achieve victory surprisingly all right there we go we did it two teams with seven fighters each that is a massive melee for us to participate in but hopefully we're going to be okay uh, we're dealing some pretty nice damage so far all I really need to do is just help my forces to win. That's it. Just help my forces to... Oh no, Dranton. Dranton. Get out of here, Dranton. You are not You are not wanted here, sir. You are not wanted here. I was uh, thwarted by your friend Zarina, so I would very much like to absolutely murder you. Oh, my yellow team are coming in. That's nice. I like it. Okay. Ooh, nice. That is wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. Okay, so he is now done. I don't think he's going to be uh, progressing to the um, progressing to the next round. Or at least we can only hope and, and cross our fingers that that is indeed the case. Really do not want to fight Dranton, that's for sure. And there we go. All right. So next round it is... What do we have? Three teams with one fighter each. A, a, a free-for-all? Really? After such a grand melee? And now we have a free-for-all? Okay. And who are we up against? This guy? Okay. I don't know who we're fighting against, to be honest, but... I guess I, the best thing I can do is just try and murder them both. Yes, not the one with the shield. Oh, oh, never mind. Okay, they were both regular... <laughs> what? <laughs> How did two regular fighters get through to this round? I have no idea. All right. I guess that just means that they were somewhat lucky. Nice. Okay, that was actually a lot less nice than I thought. I actually thought I did pretty good damage to him, but I actually only did nice damage to his horse, which is exactly what we didn't want to hit, but okay. And maybe I can just eliminate this guy, can we? Yes, there we go. Nice. And... A 
Okay, not not too bad. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's even going on with these guys. They they seem to literally just be allowing me to hit them. Uh, it, it don't, don't worry, combat AI is on maximum. <laughs> it is on maximum. I don't know what's going on with them, but... All right, let's see what we can do here. Maybe maybe I'm going to die in a shock a shock defeat at the very end. Let's hope not. I think we'll be fine. Oh, he lowered his guard at the worst moment. Wow, how did how did that happen? I have no idea. Anyway, two teams with one fighter. Let's see. This is the final round. Uh, this guy's got some... I don't know, maybe I'm just doing very little damage due to my speed bonus. That could possibly be it. This has... Wow, this guy has... I don't know, I, I seem to be doing very little... Okay, hello. Okay, we've taken him off his horse and... Oh, that's a vassal! Okay, that makes sense. Alright, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And there we go, we actually gained 4,000 dinars from our wonderful... Uh, Wonderful little foray into the tournament scene. I like it. All right, that is great. That means we've also now advanced to uh, level nine, and we're going to be. Hmm. What should, what should I level up? What should I level up? I'm thinking maybe some more inventory management, but then I'm also thinking maybe not. <laughs> uh, that's the thing. That's the thing. Hmm. I'm thinking maybe some athletics. Athletics or iron flesh is probably going to be pretty good. Let's go for some iron flesh. I'm just randomly placing points now because I'm not really, not really entirely sure. I know exactly what I'm aiming towards. I'm aiming towards about 18 in charisma, maybe even 21 in charisma to try and get as much leadership as possible without it being too much of a grind to get those skill points. Or uh, we're going to go for 18 charisma and then a little bit more intelligence because obviously I would like to get some more engineering and some more surgery skill. I'd probably like to get to about 18 intelligence for that. But that's another six levels. Do bear that in mind. So we need another seven levels for the charisma to be 21. We need another, what, six levels? So that's 13 levels total. So then we're going to be level 22. And then experience is going to start getting much, much slower as we get into the sort of mid-20s. When you get past that, and when you get to level 30 and above, that's when things slow down a great deal. So by that time, you kind of need your build to be somewhat where you need it to be. So, for example, if I was making my character to be a really, really good, proficient combat person then obviously I would try to, you know, get to 24 strength, 18 agility, and then put the rest in whatever I'd want to put it in. But yeah, generally, I think the way I'm doing it is all right. You know, we're play we're, we're kind of playing the leader role. You know, we're playing the leader role. We want to be as, as good as we possibly can in leading armies to victory. That's pretty much what we wanted to try and do. Obviously, I was unaware that I was going to run into Jeremus so incredibly quickly. That was the only reason why I actually uh, specced so much into surgery, because I thought to myself, hey, you know what? I'm probably not going to be getting very lucky in regards to finding a companion. Oh, hello there. Oh, hello there. I think this might be a guy that we want to fight. Do we? Does he want to fight me, though? That's the question. I'm going to just run around after him for a little bit until daytime. All right, here we go. It's daytime. Hopefully it's not going to be too dark because I attacked him straight away as soon as, yeah, they, as you can see, it's basically dawn. And uh, this is going to be really, really interesting. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait here for a little bit of time. We're going to just kind of hold position on the other side of this river. And obviously this is fantastic. This is actually one of the most perfect locations we could have. And what we're going to do is we're going to hopefully make it so that the enemy has to walk across here. Yeah, as you can see, they are walking across, but they're walking across a little bit too early, which is making things a little uncomfortable for us. Yeah, this is this is a bit... Uh, maybe a bit difficult. Maybe a bit difficult. I'm just going to continue telling people to kind of hold position over here. We don't want them to charge in just yet. Now we're going to tell them to charge in. And then I'm going to try and do some very quick damage to their uh, to their forces here. Going to try and split them off a little bit as well. We really want to make sure that they are running in different directions. I'm kind of trapped right now. This is kind of bad. <laughs> Hello. 
Can I get out of here, please? Can I get out of here? My own forces are actually blocking me, hilariously enough. Okay, there we go. We seem to be okay. They ran their archers directly into us. Might I remind you? It, wow, that was um, that was interesting. I was not expecting them to do something so silly, but okay. Uh, is that the enemy lord? I think that's the enemy lord right there. Yep, he, it looks like it looks like him. Okay, so far so good. So far so good. Let's just kill these Nord footmen. I really need to eliminate this archer. Don't really want him to shoot. Yep, that's the thing that mm, that, uh, that grinds my gears. That grinds my gears. It's one of those things that I remember very vividly from Warband being one of those things that was just incredibly frustrating to deal with. Any single time you're attempting, without a shield, bear in mind, any single time you're without a shield and you're trying to hit someone, namely an archer, crossbowman, someone with the thrown weapon or something like that, the enemy would always hit you just before you were about to swing at them and it would interrupt you enough so that you wouldn't be able to complete your swing. That was always one of those things that just ground my gears like no one's business. But uh, yeah, obviously we won. <laughs> we actually won, surprisingly enough. But there you go. That was really, really good. We ended up losing no one of note. We just lost a couple of recruits and footmen. That is really not bad at all. But we eliminated his entire party. Unfortunately, he managed to escape. Now, if you are someone that has not played Warband, and if you've just played Bannerlord, there is no 100% chance to capture lords in Warband. Uh, to capture lords, it's a percentage chance, and it's affected directly by your prisoner management skill, from what I can remember. There is a hidden, hidden percentage in regards to that. Um, so yeah, that is obviously directly correlating to whether you actually do... Um, you know get these lords captured and, and so on and so forth so that obviously means that we cannot do the whole war of attrition kind of thing where we capture some people and we just continually put them in the in the dungeons and so on and so forth just to make it so that they are consistently weaker and weaker and weaker as time goes on so we can't do that that's obviously not something that we can do so that is uh, just something to bear in mind and uh, you can see here, I, uh, well, Jeremus actually leveled up and I placed another point in intelligence and we have another point in first aid and wound treatment for him. He already has four in surgery, but obviously I have four in surgery, so it doesn't really make any difference for him to do that. But I'd like him to be our first aid wound treatment person and maybe even our spotting person if I can't find anyone else to do the spotting for me. Um, yeah, so that's hopefully going to be kind of nice. Otherwise, we're just going to go back over to Praven. And I'm really, really pleased that we were able to achieve victory against that guy. I was kind of worried about it. I, I thought, hey, maybe we're actually going to suffer a defeat here. But it doesn't seem as though we were um, having that issue. Okay, I apparently can't sell these things here. Didn't realize. All right, let's just... Uh, oh yeah, I need to go to Sooner. I need to go to Sooner. I completely forgot. I completely forgot about that. Okay. Yeah, so now look at my wages. My wages are spiraling a little bit out of control right here, but it is just weekly wages. We've got to bear in mind it's weekly wages as uh, in Bannerlord it was weekly rather than daily. Uh, daily wages. Oh, that is just an utter nightmare. Absolutely awful. Um, but yeah, it's much, much easier in this game to deal with your wages. So anyway, there we go. Sold everything. And we're just going to go to the various little villages here. Just kind of recruit some people. Uh, these things are... These villages are literally being raided like no one's business. We, we kind of have a bit of a problem with that. We need to make sure that we maintain our army as much as possible because we really want to get as many man at arms as we can. And then... Just going to take a look here. Okay, nothing's been taken just yet. And we have Swadia. They're, they're running around with some really weakened vassals right now. So it kind of makes me think that maybe we can take advantage of even the Swadians. You know, maybe uh, that's the thing. I have no allegiance to anyone. Right now, I have no allegiance to anyone. If... Okay, uh, there's a there's a vassal from the Nords just about to be defeated. Um, if a faction loses something, so for example, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say the Rodox lose Veluca or something like that. I'll go over there and try to besiege Veluca immediately and uh, maybe we'll be lucky enough to be able to capture it. That would be amazing. 
but obviously then it very much depends on um, maintaining control of it as well. So <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a bit of an issue there too, but well, we'll, we'll see what happens, we'll see. So I'm just gonna go into Nord territory now. I have 59 units. I actually have 68 total, so it would be really, really good if we could level up these recruits and then just get some more. Aha, hello there, sir. It seems like you are um, you are fulfilling my wishes. Yes, indeed, because my wish was to level up these forces. So here we go. Let's do it. Okay, so 59 versus 60. Now bear in mind, the previous battlefield was extremely good for us because it basically separated the enemy's forces so dramatically that we were able to, well, kind of divide and conquer without having to do anything ourselves. The map was on our side in that particular instance. So we're not going to get that this time. So it might be difficult. It might be more difficult than, uh, than we think. And the enemy is just over there. There they are. Okay, so we're just going to switch to our two-handed. I've got to be a little bit careful about archers, of course. But thankfully, because the Nords are not exactly amazing when it comes to their archer proficiencies, we shouldn't really have to worry too much about them. And we're just going to charge straight on in. I do have a pretty significant amount of cavalry now. So I don't think we need to be too worried about it. And I am going to, of course, try my best to not get stopped by the enemy's archers here either. I'm just gonna try and act as a bit of a distraction. Warband archer AI is pretty funny because if you go close to them, they kind of get scared and they just stop firing completely most of the time and they switch to melee and then they try to chase you, which is really, really good actually. That's really good for a strategy and it's also really good for them to actually even recognize that you're next to them. Because sometimes in Battle Lord they don't even recognize that and they kind of, just stand there while you shoot at them um, <laughs> that can happen but in this they do tend to react to your presence and they kind of just go you know after you with their melee weapons which is absolutely fine that's good it's good for them to defend themselves but obviously in doing so they're making it so that their own forces are left without any kind of ranged support and in those situations that's great that's really fantastic just to try and prevent them from you know uh, doing any damage. It's really, really nice for us to have the ability to manipulate them in such a way like that. And obviously, that's a very realistic reaction from them as well. Because obviously, if a, an enemy cavalry comes into the archer line, what are the archers supposed to do? They're supposed to get out their melee weapons and actually, you know, fight back, right? I mean, you'd think that that would be what they would do, right? Anyway, we did end up losing 10 units. I'm actually really surprised about that, considering my surgery skill is not bad. It's not terribly bad. It's okay. And look at this. I actually do have the ability to take him prisoner, but I'm not going to do that. Because there is a wonderful, um, a wonderful system in place in Warband where if you have a decent, uh, a decent relation with people, they will come to your court when you've created your own faction. They'll come to your court and they'll say, hello, I remember you. Would you, like, you know, would you like me to become your vassal? And then you can say yes or no to them. And then they'll join you or they'll go away and join someone else. So for me specifically, I'm going to be letting him go. This guy's also got a good personality. I don't know whether you noticed what he said to us, but he has a positive personality, an honorable personality or something along those lines. He doesn't have a dishonorable personality. So that really makes a huge difference in itself too, because I really do not want to take people into my faction that are going to be dishonorable in any way. However, sometimes you can't really pick them. And you kind of just have to roll with it. Because if you are in a situation where you have a vassal that is offering to join your faction, and you're, you're and let's say you're at war against two other factions, you're going to need the help. <laughs> you're going to need the help no matter what. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put that extra point in charisma, and we're going to go for another point in leadership. And I really actually want to get some, uh, some additional weapon master, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I'm just going to continue putting points in in two-handed <sighs> yes i mean i guess what i could actually do is spec into crossbows because if i spec into crossbows you don't need power draw for crossbows which is actually pretty cool and you only need strength technically you need strength you need 15 strength i believe to use a siege crossbow or something like that i'm not entirely sure i can't, I can't really remember 
the specifics about that at the moment. But uh, yeah, anyway, we do have a couple of extra people that have leveled up. That is really, really nice. I'm actually thinking about going into a fight against this guy, but I don't really want to do that until I've recruited some additional units. But unfortunately, it looks as though I will have to... Uh, there's only one village available for recruiting. So this is going to be a bit uncomfortable. And as you can see, I can't even recruit from there. Uh, I could go to Yaragar, I guess. Yaragar seems okay get four people from there nomar might be okay it might be able to go to the villages near dirham as well yeah seems like these have been untouched which is quite nice yeah so as we saw before keradan castle was taken but unfortunately i don't think i should really take a castle i think a castle is going to be yeah, I mean, it could be okay. It could be okay to do this because then we're still going to be at war against the Nords. But then the problem is we don't have any right to rule. Right to rule is going to be a bit of a problem in itself. I actually do need to find some companions to help me out with that, to be honest. Actually, speaking of that, I'm going to just say to... Um, Say to Jeremus that he should go and do that. I suppose you know that I aspire to be king of this land. Would you then support my cause? You go ahead and do that. Thank you very much. So he's going to go away for two weeks. And if you're, as I say, if you're not familiar with Warband, this is basically a, a stat that you can see on your character report. As you can see, I have minus 17 honor rating. But you can see, where is your, where is my right to rule, actually? Apparently, I don't have it at the moment because I don't have any. But once I have right to rule, it will show up here. And basically, if you have think it is above 40 or above 30 or something like that then enemy factions will recognize you as the monarch of your own um of your own faction so they won't really uh declare war on you as much <laughs> they will still declare war on you but they just won't do it as much um if you have 80 more uh, 80 or more right to rule then it is much less likely for them to declare war so it's very much a good idea to try and get some right to rule at least a little bit and there are a lot of different companions in the game i think there's uh isn't there like what nine are there nine twelve I, I i can't remember now it's been such a long time i really cannot remember how many there are but i think there's about there, there might be about 12 is this guy wanting to attack me no he doesn't he doesn't want to attack me. I'm very surprised, actually, that he doesn't. Um, I'm going to attack him, actually. All right, let's do this. Oh, I can actually make peace with these guys as well, but I'm not going to do that right now. We are just going to go straight ahead here. 63 versus 98. This is kind of... Um, I, I, I don't know. It might be kind of dangerous. It might be kind of dangerous. So let's actually just see here real fast. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, no. This is absolutely fine. We're just going to charge straight on in. I thought that they might actually be slightly clumped up a little bit more. That would have been really, really good for them to do, but they're being a bit a bit silly about things, and they're making it a lot easier for us to attack them than they, than they could have made it. They could have made it really, really difficult for us to actually get in here, but you can see here how easy this is. I can literally just slash at them while I'm packed in like a sardine. It's uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> I thought I would die there for, for a real quick second. I thought to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't really want to be in this situation. But yeah, you can quite clearly tell that they are just completely outmatched. Because I saw their composition and I thought to myself, no, they just have footmen. This is not really a big deal. If they have footmen, it's pretty much just tier two. It, they're, they're just tier two. Can't They can't do anything. They can't do anything against... Uh, you know our units right here even though they do have a couple of trained footmen and i think they had some warriors as well but generally if they have primarily tier two units and we are fighting them with man at arms which are tier four i think they're tier four aren't they or something like that I, i'm actually not entirely sure now uh it's been such a long time since i have taken a look at a troop tree that's the reason why if you're going to play a mod and you want it to be slightly better than native in regards to quality of life improvements and things, I'd highly recommend playing a mod by the name of Floris Expanded. If you play Floris Expanded, you're going to have enhanced troop trees. You're going to actually be able to take a look at these troop trees. And uh, it's all accessible through the in-game menus. And you also have things like um, 
after death camera so if you die then you can still you know see the battle play out even if your own character is not there and uh, generally it just has a bunch of different really really cool features that um, if you still want to play on the basic map of Calradia then you can have a whale of a time on that um, so yeah it's it's a, it's a good idea to check it out if you are interested in it at all but yes otherwise there we go we actually defeated another person amazing Amazing that we were able to do that, considering he outnumbered us so dramatically. So I'm thinking we we might actually have a chance of taking Kelradan Castle. It very much depends on the amount of units that they have in the garrison there, and obviously the amount of uh, <laughs> the amount of vassals in the area as well, because the vassals are definitely going to make themselves known. They are 100% going to make it very very difficult for us just going to sell all of this to the armor merchant because he has an overabundance of money and there we have it nice another 1300 very good all right let's just go over to the nearby village oh attack the bandits yeah yeah i'm going to attack these bandits how dare you how dare you infest the one and only village that i can recruit from thank you Let's just charge straight at them. Oh, hello. You're actually on horses. Okay, that's a little bit uncomfortable. Well, that's not too bad, I suppose. Should be pretty easy for us to deal with these guys, but yeah, I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna get killed by them. That's the one thing. That is the one thing. Actually, now that I have a pretty decent amount of cash, I might actually just wanna spend around six thousand of that just getting a uh, just getting a slightly better piece of armor because as it stands i only have about 42 body armor and if you spend around 6000 maybe 8000 you might be able to get something that has significantly more body armor i'm talking about maybe 58 59 somewhere around there if you're lucky if you're lucky with finding something like that then uh, yeah that's going to be really really useful look at how much renown we gained from that as well that was really useful look at that 10 renown from that that's great i was not expecting to get so much uh, so much of a reward for it but okay i'm pleased okay so let's just very quickly go into the armor merchant here so for example you can see something like this this has 52 body armor and this has 43 the one i'm currently using so this is obviously not something that i'm going to be purchasing i won't buy the coat of plates it does give me nine more body armor and two more leg armor, which is pretty good. But I don't really want to. I don't know. I, I just don't want to. Don't want to spend almost seven thousand on something that only gives me nine more body armor. I'd rather spend another four thousand or something for like ten k total, and then get something that's a little better, maybe fifty six body armor or somewhere around there. So that's the main reason. Uh, that, that's kind of like my thinking on the whole thing. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's right. I don't know. But whatever the case, we're just going to buy a little bit of food, and then we're going to be making our way back into Nord territory. Actually, wait a minute. I already tried to recruit from there, didn't I? So let's try and recruit from Ribule over here. Ugh. Yes. It is very awful, isn't it? Yes, it is very awful when all the villages are raided. Ah, speaking of village raids, we might want to actually go and do another one of those in Nord territory. Try and reduce their economy even further. Oh, hello there. What are you doing here, sir? I am moving at 5.5. He is slower than me. This is really amusing. Okay, wait a minute. Can I catch up to him before he gets into Kelradan Castle? I'm assuming he's going there. Is he not? I'm surprised. He's not. Okay. Um, let me actually have a quick look. Oh, there's only 69 here. Haha, <laughs> nice. Yeah, okay. So there's 69 here. And we can also rescue 82 prisoners. What do you think? Might be an idea. Hmm. Because here's the thing. If we rescue these guys, we have two Swadian knights. That, actually, I'm not entirely sure if you can rescue those those troops in Warband. Uh, you might be able to. I think I'm thinking of Pendor. I'm thinking I'm, I might be thinking of Pendor because in Pendor, some high tier troops from unique spawns and things like that, they are not rescuable because they are just so powerful that they make the game imbalanced and you can't rescue them from prisoner stacks and stuff like that so i'm thinking maybe that's where i'm getting mixed up but let's actually try going in oh it's a siege tower it's gonna take 60 hours to be built this is never gonna work just so you know in my opinion at least um 
may, maybe 60 hours. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of time. Um, I can only hope that they don't have that many archers in the garrison. Oh, hello. You're wanting to fight me. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I have... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, this is exactly the reason why I have always loathed doing siege tower battles. Uh, siege towers are just incredibly slow to build, and they have this really annoying um, side effect of basically making it so incredibly easy for enemies to attack you. Really, really easy in actual fact. Okay. So, we're going to have to be super, super good in this particular battle. So good, in fact, that we are going to have to have a ratio of, what, 4 to 1? Yeah, every single one of my forces has to kill 4 enemies each. Yeah, uh, that might be... That might be too difficult. That might be too difficult. Um, we're just going to move back a little bit. Just going to move back a little bit. I really do not like this particular battlefield. Maybe I should have re-rolled the battlefield. Technically, you can do that. If you are not starting to fight, you can basically retreat immediately as soon as you get into the battlefield. And then you can go back in and you can hopefully get a different battlefield assigned to you so that you're not going to have something that is so completely not what you want. This could very well be a defeat on our hands. Let's have a look and see whether we can actually do some damage. Okay, not bad. Uh, can we get some more damage here? Thank you. These guys are literally not attacking us. Okay, now they are. That's bad. Why did I say that? <laughs> I basically just jinxed myself. Uh, okay, I'll uh, y'all Olaf. Oh, my horse literally just got absolutely murdered. Okay, let's see what I can do. Just gonna just gonna murder everyone in sight. Thank you. Okay, there we go. I'm being shot. How are we doing? Not great. My my cavalry forces are actually coming over here. I cannot die. Bear that in mind. I cannot die. If I die, then that's that's game over. That is 100% game over. So this is really bad. Oh, and I got killed. Okay, so how many... Yeah, I'm going to have to retreat from here. Oh, I can actually leave. Oh, I can actually leave. Okay, so this might be okay still. We might still be all right. It just... Yeah, okay, I can actually leave. I, I'm not sure how I'm allowed to leave this. Because they attacked me. Technically, I should not have been able to leave that particular battle. But I suppose because I was the instigator of the siege... That could be the reason, but that was definitely a defeat on our hands. So that was really, really lucky in my opinion. That was just super, super lucky that we were able to even run away at that point. So, okay, what we're going to do is we're now going to start pumping up our intelligence and we're just going to try to get to 15. I'm going to level up maybe trade skill, maybe... Hmm, I'm thinking maybe we'll also go for some Iron Flesh. I really want to get more HP. I feel very fragile at the moment, but I don't know whether that really makes any difference. Let's go for some more Trade Skill, and we'll just go for some One-Handed just in case. But yeah, all right. That, that was actually not too bad. I'm actually pretty happy that we were able to survive. I'm kind of surprised that we were able to survive that in general. But um, yeah, we're just going to have to do more little skirmishes, in my opinion. More little skirmishes are definitely what, it, what are on the cards for me. And that means that we're probably going to go and uh, just head into Nord territory, basically. And just try and fight some more vassals where we can. And I'm actually thinking that maybe if Dirim gets taken, I might decide to declare war against the Saranids and actually just take Dirim. Because... We, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's an opportunity, right? That's an opportunity, and I think maybe possibly one of the best opportunities we might get. So I'm going to see what happens here. Let's actually just see if the, the, if the Saranids are even able to do this, and let's see what kind of garrison they leave in there. Because if the garrison is too, too extensive, and I'm not able to, um, well, 
I'm not able to do anything in regards to building, uh, you know, siege ladders or maybe if it's a siege tower again, that's going to be really, really difficult for us to deal with. Obviously, that wouldn't come into effect if there are very few units in the garrison. If there are um, a certain number, then you can actually, they're not even going in yet. Yeah, it's highly unlikely they're even going to go and start this, in my opinion. I don't think they're going to go in there. But if they do, then that's okay, because we can actually just declare war against the Saranids and then we can go straight on in there. But it's highly unlikely. I'm I'm going to I'm gonna say I highly doubt they'll take Durham. If they do take Durham, I will try to get over there as soon as possible. But as it is, nah, I, I don't think so. I think it's unlikely. But who knows? I don't know. The AI can sometimes be really, really weird, and they can actually be somewhat audacious and pretty lucky most of the time too. So... Let's just uh, cross our fingers and hope for them, shall we? Um, let's actually see what else is going on here. Anything else happening that we really need to know about? Doesn't seem like it. And you can see here the Saranids actually took Reindy Castle. I have no idea what the Saranids are even thinking right now. Taking Reindy Castle and then going straight for Durham seems like such a insecure way of doing it. But okay, well, whatever the case, I'm just going to head on over to Coulomb. And we're just going to raid that. I need as much money as possible, really, for the time when we actually start our own faction. So we're just going to plunder this village once again. Now, bear in mind, obviously, me doing this, it's, it's again, it's going to draw people to me. It's going to draw people to me. And if they do come to me, then I welcome them with open arms. If they want to, uh, if they want to get murdered by my many, many Swadian man-at-arms, then I'm very, very happy to receive them. But, uh, yeah... That uh, very much obviously depends. I don't really want a large army to come over here, that's for certain. Okay, so it seems like it's fine. We have no enemies coming over here. Okay, there we go. The Kingdom of Nords and the Swadians, they actually made peace with each other. And of course, they, they actually needed to. You know why they did that? They did that purely for the fact that um, the Swadians are having problems. They're having problems against the Saranids. That's the reason why they did that. Otherwise, they would have just continued to attack, I assume. Um, but this actually makes it a little bit more difficult for us now because, as you can see, if we go to factions, Nords, they're not at war against anyone. So if we actually want to try and take something of theirs, it's going to be even more difficult because they're not going to be attacking anyone. Their vassals are going to... Uh, gain their former strength back, and then it's just going to be even more difficult. Oh, <laughs> there's Jeremus. Okay, fantastic. That's actually hilarious because we just did a, a village raid, and we know that Jeremus doesn't like village raiding, so it's actually pretty happy. Uh, well, shall, shall we say it's a, a nice little coincidence that he's coming back at this point. And now you can see my character report. Boom. We have three right to rule. Every single time you send off a companion and they come back, it gives you three right to rule. So yeah, it's actually going to be really, really useful for us. And I'm thinking maybe we'll uh, we'll just stick around here a little bit. Because you never know. Maybe I'll see some uh, some Nord vassals. Maybe I... Oh no, Durham is not going to get taken as I thought. Yeah, that's, um, that's kind of sad. Oh well, never mind. I guess that's it for this episode. And um, well, we'll see what actually transpires in the upcoming episodes. Because there's going to be that opportunity. There will be an opportunity. It just has to be one that we are ready to take when it pops itself up. So we'll see when that actually happens. In the meantime, I will be continuing to level up my forces. And I have 11 Swadian Knights and 12 Man at Arms. Pretty nice. And we're obviously going to continue trying to level those up. I'm almost maxed out, actually, in terms of my company size, which is pretty impressive. I had no idea that I was that close to the maximum company, but that's pretty nice. And otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.